the fall. It's the last thing I remember. Agony is one of those indie games that's been in development for years and pretty much from the get-go it didn't hide the fact that it was trying to tell quite a dark and sinister story about a tortured soul stuck in hell navigating through nightmarish environments and avoiding horrible looking demons. Now I went into this one expecting to hate it but also ready to have my mind changed if that makes sense. Like I went in expecting it to suck but also willing to give it a chance if it was actually decent. And you know what? No, it didn't win me over and it's probably one of the worst games I think I've played so far in 2018 beaten only slightly out by Hunt Down the Freeman. In fact, honestly, I'd probably rather play that than Agony. Playing this game, I actually felt like I was condemned to hell myself, and simply bringing myself to play Agony was, ironically, complete Agony. Visually, Agony is an ugly game, and I mean that both in the sense of its art style, but also from a technical standpoint. There are moments when the game looks genuinely artistic, though, and pulls off some simply stunning looking environments, making good use of the lighting to create some haunting and eerie backdrops. The kind of moments where you stand there for a few seconds just admiring how nice something looks before resuming what you were doing. But far too often it's just dark to the point of being unable to see a goddamn thing. Now, I know this makes sense from the perspective of the game world. I mean, you're in hell and all that, but what you get is these near pitch black areas where you can't see a goddamn thing and what you can see looks murky and undefined. It's just a definite lack of competency in making each light source really do its job. I mean, a game can be dark and atmospheric and still allow the player to see where they're going and compare this footage to the original screenshots of the game where it looked positively gorgeous. Sunny Jim, there's a term for this and it's called the bull shot. Now, I don't know if this was something to do with it being developed for the consoles as well, but regardless of the reason, this just isn't a very good looking game. There's also some laughably bad character models in this game too, like they would have looked bad two generations ago. Damned whore. And for this kind of thing to be in a 2018 game is just unacceptable. And don't give me that crap about it being an indie game. There's plenty of indie games that don't have character models that look like someone hit the face randomizer in Elder Scrolls Oblivion. On top of that, it runs like absolute shit. I have a 1080, an i7, and 16 gigabyte of RAM, and the frame rate just tanks in certain areas to the point that it's honestly almost unplayable. It doesn't necessarily tank during moments when it's pulling off any kind of impressive visuals. It just stutters and chugs along regardless of what you're looking at. Apparently they censored the game before release too, so if you're one of those edgy types who bought this game to see naked demon chicks, well, sorry to tell you, bro, but you're gonna have to put it with naked demon chicks without nipples or vaginas. But don't worry, you'll be up against demons with vagina teeth for heads and collect vagina apples for upgrades. Yeah, literally. To say this game is edgy is a bit of an understatement, and it seems if the themes aren't dealing with gore or violence, it's something to do with sex and nudity. Because as we all know, the only way to make a game mature and dark is to include lots of violent sex and nudity. Half of the cinematics involving the Red Goddess just include a bunch of fugly female demons writhing around on the ground, awkwardly rubbing each other, and I assume eating each other out, though the animation is just so awful it's hard to tell. Not to mention whoever made these has no clue how to use depth of field properly and just seems to honestly be changing the focal point back and forth at complete random. Makes me feel like I've had sand rubbed into my eyes when I'm watching them. Gameplay itself is pretty simple. You're a guy that's been condemned to hell and when the game begins you have no memory or recollection of how you got there, with your only main objective being to find the aforementioned Red Goddess. As the game goes on you do figure out what happened before your death and the game even has a bunch of different endings if you're so inclined to replay this thing to see them. Throughout your journey through hell, you'll come across other tortured souls, which serve as vessels to possess if your current physical form is destroyed. So long as you take the bags off the head firstly, something the game doesn't even tell you and I had to find this out the hard way. Actually, you know what? Maybe keep the bags on. Other than that, there's more powerful demons to possess and this seems cool initially until you realize there's no kind of combat system and the possession only lasts for a short amount of time. Not to mention you can't complete puzzles when you're possessing these guys or even activate checkpoints. About the only benefit is that you can move faster, which is useful because the basic movement speed is about as slow as an arthritic grandmother. Or the other thing you can do is kill the spiders made out of pubic hairs, or pulverize the weaker tortured souls who don't put up any kind of fight, and seeing as they're your only means of revival sometimes, it seems kind of pointless to do this. Early on in the game, it seems like they tried to include some semblance of the player being able to avoid the tougher demons because there's cracks in the walls and ground where you're able to hide in to avoid detection. But then just later in the game, it seems they threw this idea out the window, because these hiding spots are just absent entirely, as is by this point my patience. Really just one of those typical stealth games where you crouch a lot and avoid enemies instead of being able to kill things. 
and we all just pretend this was a conscious design choice instead of the developers being too lazy to code in an actual combat system. <laughs> Stealth is doubly annoying too because most of the demons can kill you in a single hit, so you don't really have all that much of an allowance for error. And it doesn't help that I have no clue how the stealth works. I mean, I know it has something to do with the noise you make, but does the lighting affect it? <laughs> Who knows? Your guess is as good as mine. By the end of the game, I just ran past everything anyway. Puzzles in the game, and I struggle to call them puzzles, often just involve running around and collecting a bunch of items, usually skulls or hearts. No vaginas, sorry. Then dropping them off somewhere so you can progress onward. Later on though, it's almost exclusively drawing sigils on some kind of tablet that opens a nearby door. How do you know which sigil to draw? Well, you often don't. But there's usually a bunch of corpses nearby with their arms outstretched to the supposedly correct one. But then later in the game, there's like a dozen of these dead assholes pointing at different sigils. So you end up just having to try all of them until you find the one that works. Goody. That's if you can even find the spot where you're supposed to drop these things off. You see, Agony is a confusing and bizarre game, but not in a clever or artistic way. More as in a where the fuck am I and what am I supposed to be doing kind of way. The amount of times I've been playing this and something happened and I had no idea what the hell it was, or the amount of times I've just been simply lost in this pitch black shithole environment, unaware of what my ultimate goal is. I mean, look at this tunnel I'm swimming through. What a perfect metaphor. <laughs> Agony hides this lack of direction behind trying to be open-ended as if it's allowing the play the freedom to progress in their own manner, when really it's just a perfect example of bad level design. A hodgepodge of half-baked layouts, environments, and mechanics. Even the basic controls are janky and glitched as well, like simply trying to navigate the levels you'll often get stuck on invisible obstacles. Platforming is harder than it should be because the movement controls can feel unresponsive and I had numerous times where I even got stuck outside the map as a disembodied soul. I mean, if something as basic as the movement controls doesn't work properly, you know you're gonna have issues. I wanna gotta talk about the checkpoints too. Checkpoints are just stupid. You get auto saves pretty frequently, but if you die, you're thrown back to the last checkpoint, which can at times set you back like 15 or 20 minutes. But the progress you've made still carries over. It's weird. Boss fights are laughable and stupid too, and one of them, for instance, you're fighting this giant goat-headed thing that has wings and looks like it could rip you in half if it wanted to. And yet you beat it by tricking it to swipe through holes in the wall while you run around and whack it in the ass with a torch. I swear to god there's like a Three Stooges skit where they do the exact same thing. It flies off at the end of this fight, you expect to see it again, but no, it never comes back. It was probably embarrassed about being in a game like this. I have to go now. My planet needs me. A later boss fight involves a charging, bull-like demon who gets stunned when he runs into walls. I mean, remember that gimmick? Now look, I'm not being hyperbolic here, but I honestly don't think I had fun with this game the entire time I played it. I'd read online some people saying this game is about 10 hours long. Well, I finished it in just over half that time, and I have no interest in replaying it again. There's a whole heap of collectibles per level and a new game mode you unlock when you finish the campaign, allowing you to play as a succubus, which look, that sounds good, but again, it's really kind of boring and it's just replaying the main levels with a faster movement speed and a slightly altered route. None of this really held my interest, and all I could think about was just how much I wanted to uninstall it. Maybe Agony was created as some kind of ironic experience, like maybe you're supposed to suffer with the controls, the level design, and the horrible performance, in the same way your character suffers through his experience in hell. Maybe on some level we're being subconsciously made to suffer in our own way by subjecting ourselves to this blended up mess of a game. If that was actually the case, well, then this thing would have been brilliant. Is it the worst game ever made? No. Is it the worst game of 2018? It might be, but it really just is a thoroughly unenjoyable and depressing experience, and not for the reasons it should be. Agony fails on multiple levels. It's not a particularly good stealth game. It's not a particularly good puzzle game. It doesn't look all that good visually, and it doesn't even really have all that much appeal in terms of the artistic visuals either. What did I like about it? Well, um... No, I'm still here. I'm, I'm just thinking. Nothing, I guess? I don't really know what kind of demographic this game would appeal to. If you want a game with a hellish theme, I can think of a dozen or so games that did it better. If you're just a horny edgelord who wants to have sex with demons, look, I can think of maybe half a dozen or so games that do that better too. And the demons in those games have their nipples intact. At the end of the day, Agony deserves to be condemned, just not for the reasons it hoped. She is the answer.